today. From Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee, it's week three of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Ryan Tannehill and the Tennessee Titans taking on Carson Wentz and the Indianapolis Colts. Just off the east bank of the Cumberland River and across the water from the Tennessee State Capitol building, there's a look at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their Titans are set to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we take a look at this Titan ball club entering play. It's been a great start to the season, back-to-back -back wins to begin the campaign. Yeah, you don't want to get too excited. There's still a lot of season to go, but they've come out playing good fundamental football, and that might carry them a long way. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. Now come the Titans for their first possession, led by Ryan Tannehill in his 10th NFL season and third with Tennessee. And the former Miami Dolphin had a career renaissance in 2019 with Tennessee and carried it over into 2020. A career-high 32 touchdowns, just seven interceptions, and those were the fewest he'd thrown in a full season. And speaking of full seasons, he played all 16 games for the first time since 2015 He's got to be excited about 2021. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brent, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's in 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football, and that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now a handoff to Henry. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. 109 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Now it's McNichols. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. Now a second down and six. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. And he's taken down inside the 30. 
No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. A run with Henry on first down, but nowhere to go there as he can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. This is caught. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. Julio Jones. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Marky adds the extra point, and they open the lead up now to 25. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Good job, good job. Indy set to go on offense once more. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave them with second and a yard. Wentz now to throw. Keeps himself upright. They'll run the screen with Mack. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. It'll be a pickup of only a yard. And that'll bring up a third and one. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Wentz to throw on third and one. And that will be incomplete. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run for it. It's Mack. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And the Titans, they've got the football back, and they've got it in great field position. Partner, when you see a running play stop short like that, you just know that the defensive front, they won the battle of leverage and created the push back into the opposing backfield. And for the offensive coordinator, whether you had one yard to go or 20 yards to go on fourth down, now you're probably saying, oh, maybe I should have passed it, right? Yeah, hindsight is always 20-20. Second down, they go again with Henry. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Titans on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and nine. Running left, it's Henry. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 134 yards rushing for him now as this sensational afternoon continues. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, 
They've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Henry relishing the chance to be the Titans' lead dog. He's in the backfield again on first and 10. Going to give this time to the tailback. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. On the ground, this is McNichols. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Derrick Henry, his third touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Titans are closing in on a third straight victory to start the campaign. Even though they've got this big advantage, Charles, they are not taking their foot off the gas pedal right now. Well, I think what we're seeing is the result of all their great preparation and great practice time during the week. And even though it seems like this is a great chance to pull people back and maybe, you know, not try and score a few more times, they don't want to do that. I think they're enjoying what they're seeing, the collective effort, and they want to play it all the way out. Perky with the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. So this drive spans seven plays, and Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches, and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Three yards the gain there, second down. Here's Wentz to throw. Finds Hines again for the completion. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Wentz going to try and throw on third. Middle of the field to the tight end, Doyle. And he is going to have a Colts first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now wins. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. Wins to throw again. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Doyle. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. To throw, it's Wins. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. A gain of six there on first. Second and four. Six. 
Wentz going to throw. Throw over the middle. Going to be caught here by Mo Alley Cox. And we are inside at two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Danico Autry picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Throw left side complete. That's Campbell. Now he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Now Wentz on third down. And that is caught. Oh, what a catch at the five-yard line. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column. But as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. Wentz. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. Second down and goal. Wentz to the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking that time to get it to Paris Campbell, but now it's third and goal. Again, it's Wentz. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byer. CD, this defense, I mean, at this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for Tennessee, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now on the young season. And they will hit the road next week to take on the New York Jets. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they'll fall to 1-2. And, and they'll look to regroup next week as they head down to Miami to take on the Dolphins. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Titans are winners here as we say so long from Nashville.